Welcome to Freezing Real Podcast. I'm your host, Bridget, along with my husband, Chris. Weekly, we talk about being parents, what happened that week. It's basically our therapy session to vent out everything that we went through. We are boy parents. We have three boys, Enzo, Rhett, and Arlo. And if you'd like to get to know us a little bit better, you can check out our website, freezermilk.com, or follow us on Instagram at Freezer Milk Podcast. We also have YouTube and TikTok, Freezer Milk. Thanks so much for listening, and we hope you enjoy. Welcome back. Hey, hey, good morning. Good morning. We don't normally record in the morning. No, we never record in the morning. No. That's probably when we're the most alert. The hour still starts with five. I know. Nothing like getting up at 4.50 every morning. <laughs> my biological clock's just like it. Your biological clock? Yeah, that one. Your internal clock? No, my biological, like my father oh. clock. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, you got to be up before the kids. Right. <laughs> you got to make sure that you're ready to go. I have, like, my routine in the morning. I do my thing. I come out. I open up all the blinds. I turn on some classical music. I make coffee for both of us. Strong coffee. Strong coffee. I start to make you breakfast. I make I get Rhett's little snacks all set up, his applesauce, because I know he's going to wake up and he's going to want to come and sit on the couch and eat his applesauce and his peanut butter crackers. And he doesn't even eat the crackers. He licks the peanut butter off the crackers and throws them on the floor. That's like normal kid behavior. Yeah, it's wonderful. <laughs> That's my routine every morning at 4.50. Yep. I'm so routine. glad that you get up now because, like, when I was in my immediate postpartum, it was like we were up with baby somewhat. He's a really good sleeper, though, but... We were just tired, and so I wasn't getting up early, and so you wouldn't get up until Rhett woke up, which was still early, Yeah. but you didn't have time to like adjust and wake up before he got up. Yeah, but if you remember correctly, a lot of that had to do with the fact that I had sleep apnea, undiagnosed sleep apnea, so I wasn't sleeping right, but now I like, now that I have been diagnosed with it and have a mask and I get oxygen and I can breathe at night... <laughs> um, <clears throat> it's amazing actually, how little hours you need, right? Yeah, I only get like five and a half hours of sleep now. Used I used to, to sleep like eight or nine. You used to look at me constantly and be like, how do you function on five to six hours of sleep, Bridget? Well, I, mean, I don't understand. Yeah, I mean, I wake up in the morning and I'm actually like refreshed and ready to go. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Ready for the day. And then before, I was like, ugh. Sorry for missing last week, guys, by the way. Yeah, it's been a busy, busy month. <laughs> but... We're managing. We're yeah. just, it's like juggling. And we decided this morning the, re- the reason why, because uh, we've been kind of arguing a little bit about podcast, because we just haven't been able to get on the same wavelength, I don't think, as far as that's concerned. It's not that we don't want to do our podcast. We love our podcast, but we just, it's so hard to find time to do it. Yeah. And so this morning, we decided to prioritize it. I'm proud of us. Yeah. Well, we said, I'm you know, proud of you this week, by the way. So you have done some active, like, choosing not to allow anger to win in some moments with Rhett this week. Yeah, I haven't been my best this week with with Rhett. No, I said, I said that you you chose some moments. No, I know, I know, but, but there, obviously, there were some things that were amiss. And For the last couple of weeks, probably. Yeah, I mean, I've been very short-fused with him. Yeah. And it hasn't been fun or, you know, attractive by any means. But he's just been put, he's been, you know, he's at that age. He's, you know, two and a half, almost two, two, yeah. two and a half years old. And he's just pushing buttons left and right. And it's hard. And he, he's doing his whining, you know, he does his extensive whining and complaining thing. And it's just, but it's I'm, ex- you know, I'm extremely proud of him for yesterday because we finally made the conscious decision to enroll him in daycare. Um, we have an at-home nanny, but we figured, you know, it's... We're doing house showings. It's really hard um, to keep the house show ready with a toddler. We are planning on him going into daycare uh, when we relocate anyway. Yeah. When we move out of state, because our nanny won't be coming with us. Um, and then... We, our buyer on our house fell through for failure to fund. So we had to put the house back on the market. And so we made the decision when that happened to say, hey, you know, we don't, we, we don't know how long it's going to take to sell and close. Um, but we know we are no longer leaving the state in two weeks. So we said, hey, you know, let's pull the trigger on this now and find a daycare out here for the, the time being. And they're aware that it won't be a long-term thing uh, with them. 
but he had his first day yesterday. I think we were doing him a disservice by not doing something like that. I mean, like like you said, you know, the first two years. Yeah, zero to two is really zero, good. Zero to two is good to have him home with us and, you know, to mold and to bond and... Have a private nanny if you have, can afford it. Yeah, um, but he started to get really bored and mm -hmm. antsy and... He wasn't socializing and he wasn't being challenged and me and you were so busy throughout the day that it made it very difficult for us to give him that one-on-one -on -one and and to actually teach him anything most likely what was happening now that i like think on it is that he probably felt like we were neglecting him uh -huh. even though he had like a caretaker that like, wasn't mom and dad he knew we were here but choosing not to interact yeah so it probably was like a little bit hard on him yeah well so yesterday was his first day at this new daycare and me and you both took him, just me and you and him. And uh, we were kind of worried that, you know, he's a pandemic baby. He's he's going to have, you know, um, separation separa anxiety. Yeah, separation he, I, anxiety. He does have and, separation anxiety. <laughs> uh, so we were a little bit, uh, I think we were a little bit nervous about dropping him off. But me and you walked in and uh, we brought him into his classroom and I set him down and he beelined. And went straight for the kids and all the toys and didn't look back. I love his, he does the cutest little thing when he's like so like overwhelmed, excited about stuff where he like throws his hands out and down like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> look at all these toys. And he kept walking around the classroom yesterday doing it like, what? They have so much new stuff. He was what? so excited yesterday. Like he didn't even, he didn't, no tears. He, he didn't even look back. He didn't even notice we were gone. <laughs> we so we're like, maybe, maybe we're like, maybe we should exit now. So we did. <laughs> we didn't even say goodbye. To he, him. Nope, we didn't even say goodbye enough. And he just was so overwhelmed and excited and just, and this particular school gives you updates throughout the day. Um, sends you photos and sends you, you know, what they did. And, and the whole entire time, he just had a great day. He had a smile on his face. He was excited. He was playing. He was doing his thing. And I mean, who wouldn't love it? The dude did back-to-back -back activities all day. Yeah, and when he got home, he was exhausted. <laughs> he was so tired. He was so tired. He's still asleep. I'm like, he, he normally gets up at like 5 o'clock, 5.15, <laughs> and he's still asleep. I'm like, dude was tired, and he, he didn't have trouble going to bed last night. He just... I put him in his, you know. He, only, he did only take a 50 minute nap, but I'm glad he's, I didn't think he'd sleep at all, honestly. Yeah. I, mean, I was at least surprised he tried. that he took a nap. Well, I put him in his crib last night and he was out. He didn't complain. He didn't hear a peep out of him. I, you know, I'm hoping it's the same this week, but yesterday was good. I mean, I'm glad that he was able to socialize and interact with, you know, other kids and, you know, I'm just have some. I'm intrigued to see how today goes because now he understands, like, Oh. I get dropped off here for a long period of time. Like, yeah. I get dropped off and they're gone for, like, the day. <laughs> yeah, he gets a water day today, though. Yeah, so. yeah. But it was it's it was really interesting to see. Um, I was kind of that way when I was a kid. I always got really excited to go to, like, daycares and stuff like that because there was always something to do. Um, oh. So I'm glad that he took to it, at least for yesterday. That yeah. was a win. That was a huge yeah. win. You know? I'll see what happens today when I drop him off. But all in all, I, I feel good about it and... I'm excited that we made that decision, um, especially with everything that's going on currently in our lives. Um, you know, how weird was it yesterday though at the house? So oh, I mean, man, I didn't know what to do with myself because <laughs> I, I we've been operating off of like because we've had two kids here, yeah, and we've been and we've been operating off of running a business and full time, nine to five for, yeah, working and... nine to fives and taking care of kids, and so we're pulled in so many different directions. And it's really hard to sit down for more than 30 minutes on one single task because you just get pulled. Um, and yesterday, like, I sat down at my desk and I was, like, like just sitting there antsy waiting for <laughs> Someone something. Someone needs something. Yeah, something that somebody didn't need something. And I, like, sat there and I, like, blew through all my work. And I was, like, in, like, an hour. And I was, like, what do I do now? You know? <laughs> So I think it's going to be a huge, it's going to probably be more of an adjustment for me than anything because now I'm going to have, have all this time to, to uh, you know, work on the stuff that I need to work on without distractions. Yeah. But it was good. Going back to, though, I'm proud of you. You want to talk about, like, the times that you, like, consciously, like, chose to not, like, let him push your buttons this week? Well, I've been... Because I'm so freaking proud of you for it like 
I got to witness in the moment where you like legit like bit your tongue and were like, no, well, I've been, I'm not going to get mad. So something, a little backstory, something my father used to do when I was younger was he would, he would bottle everything up, then he would implode. And then he would explode. And it would scare the shit out of us kids. Like, me and my, my two sisters. It was terrifying. And I always told myself I didn't want to be my dad. And I've recently, with him, been him. Um, and I've been exploding. And it is not where I want to be. Um, so, me and you had a date night the other day, <laughs> sort of. And it turned into more of an argument. Um, it was good. a much needed argument, a discussion, and yeah. um, basically said, "Look, you you need to you need to help yourself here. Like, there's things that you need to look internally at and kind of work on and figure out. And whether that's with therapy or just reflection or meditation or whatever. So I think it was that was Saturday night." Yeah. So Sunday morning, I kind of woke up and I was like, man, like, you know, as much as you want to be right all the time, Chris, you're not. And she has a good point. Um, Because you're not your dad and you're like an amazing fucking father uh, to these kids. I just, I I feel, I hate the feeling I get. Like, it's awful feeling after I yell at him. Like, it's not, it is, makes me sick. It's like, man, like. He is t- not even two and a half years old. Like you need to reel it in. Like what is your deal? You're not sh- you're not showing him what it means to to be a good human or a good dad or you're a good man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you keep doing this, he's gonna ref- he's gonna mirror that behavior. Yep. And he's gonna explode. And that's not what you want. Like. So anyway, I woke up. I don't know, Sunday morning and had some time because I was up early before everybody else and um, kind of sat out in the backyard and just kind of did some self-reflection, did some meditating and um, started reading uh, a little bit more of my Bible and kind of just went to the, went to the, some of the, the Bible verses that, you know, touch on anger and uh, so what was it, Sunday um, he got me boiled and I finally, like I was about to snap at him and I caught myself and I was like, you know, I thought about what I was working on and I kind of just pulled it all back in and said, Hey, need a second. And, you know, just tried to change that pattern, you know? And I think that's kind of what it's all about is trying to break those chains and those, those generational curses because, generational traumas, yeah. You know, um, I'm still going to mess up. I'm human. I mean, I'm still going to have my moments where I can't control it. And, you know, me and you have gotten to a point where you, you're like, look, if you need to walk away for a few minutes, then that's what you need to do. And I had to do that on Sunday afternoon, I think it was, or yesterday or something, where I was just like, hey, I need, I need a couple minutes. And you're like, hey, go start the grill. <laughs> so it is something. It's. I mean, it's going to be... A constant battle. It's going to be... It's not easy. If it was easy, then nobody would have generational traumas because everyone would be great and not emotionally, you know, traumatizing to their children. Well, two-year-olds... But it's not easy. Two-year-olds can push you and push you and push you and push you and push you. And, you know, you always remind me it's just a phase. And I'm like, you know, well, Arlo is going to be a phase. (laughs) Arlo coming up as well. So... It's something that, you know, I've got to be, deal- I'm going to be dealing with for at least the next four years, five yeah. years. Um, and then even as they get older, they're going to push your buttons. It's just going to be in a different fashion and they can communicate. Yeah. So they're going to get sassier. They're going to get, you know, more meaning, you know, meaning behind, behind what they're doing and they're saying. And they're going to get mean. And so this is a good time for me to kind of learn how to be able to brush that shit off and demonstrate good Kindness. And kind, yeah, love and, you know, just be understanding about it all. Because they have a bunch of emotions going on right now that they can't process. And neither can I, apparently. So, <laughs> I think, you know. I think something I said, I don't know if it stuck with you, but it always sticks with me. Is I always think of, if I get angry and explode at my kid, it is causing a chemical reaction in their body of a cortisol release that will then 
put them into a terrified State, mode yeah. from a chemical standpoint, and they don't know how to regulate that. Well, I mean, the last people in the world they should be fearful of is their parents. I know. You know? Like, we should be warmth and comfort. I mean, obviously, we got to direct, but be there's a way. That we got to yeah. be parents, but there's got to be a way to do it that's healthy for everybody, not explosive anger, you know? <laughs> but I'm so proud of you, because I, 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 was, I was in the same room as you when it happened, and I saw you, like, boil up. Because, I don't know, he kept, like, trying to, like, slam the drawer shut or, like, you know, he was ripping. He was trying to mess with all of our, we have expensive uh, sliding shades for our door. Patio, yeah. Uh, And he was, like, trying to, like, he was just, he was trying to push buttons. You know, he was trying to get a reaction. uh, Because we were cleaning the house, getting ready for a show. And so we were, you know, quote, unquote, ignoring him. We were getting the attention that he needed in that moment. And I feel like we're trying to get better, too. We used to have to do this with Enzo when he was little, where we'd say, okay, you know what? They need five minutes of my undivided attention. Let me give them that and see if that will help. Um, and I think Rhett's starting to get to that age, too, now, where he sometimes just needs five minutes of our undivided attention when we're in the middle of a task. So in that moment, he was, like, trying to get our attention and, you know, yanking shades back and forth, trying to rip them off the wall. And I saw you, like, you, like... It's like you inflated like a balloon. Like you got really like big and you could tell your anger was about to pop out and you were just going to like yell at him. And then I saw you like, you like twisted your fist and were like, put it down by your side and we're like, Ugh! and then we're like, okay. <laughs> and you kind of like breathed it out. Exhaled. Yes. And I was, and then you're like, but come on, let's go over here. And you like redirected him. And I was like, I was so fucking proud of you. Like yeah. that. That was that, hard. Yes, and that that's hard. what was amazing is that in the moment you were able to say, like, no, I'm not going to give in to my body wanting to react to this. I'm going to do it differently and better, and I'm making a conscious decision to try to do it better than my parents did. It's so interesting how difficult that is to do that because I, in that moment, I was like, I was doing some self-reflection. I was like, what traumas in my life have put me here, like, to this point where I, I, this is how I react now as an adult. Um, And it took me way back to uh, when I was a kid and how I would pop off because I would would see my dad do it and I thought the behavior was right. And I struggled through middle school, high school, and even my, you know, adult teen years, or in my 20s, with anger. Like, I was like, you know... It's not my dad's fault, but he didn't demonstrate how Modeling, to. He didn't. Yeah. He didn't demonstrate properly how to. Um, how to handle those emotions? Yeah. You know his his go to was anger, and yeah. my go to was anger, and I don't want Rhett or our boys to be that way. When you and I were discussing um, in the in the car on our date, you know, and you were kind of like, "Well, you know, I just, you know, I." I, I'm angry, my dad was angry, you know, like, we just have anger, blah, 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 and, like, I think it made you probably mad at the moment, but I was like, and? Like, do something about it. Yeah. Don't don't let that be your excuse to, as to why, like, you grew up in a household that your dad was angry, and therefore it's just ingrained in you, so choose to be fucking better. Yeah. And I was so, like, I can't express how proud. How proud. Big things this week. And I think, you know, I think we're going to wrap it up because kids are getting up, but I'm going to leave everybody with this. I think it's important that, especially with people with kids and just people in general, um, it's important that we um, be our kids' voices at this age and help them to regulate those emotions and deflect those emotions onto other people because that you know, negatively or positively impacts other people. And I think it's important that we help them to understand that you know not everything is most things aren't that important and it's not worth the anger yeah so well we appreciate you listening and talk yeah. again next week take care thanks everybody for listening you can check us out at freezermilk.com or instagram freezer milk podcast until next week guys thanks Don't forget, parenting is a trip. We are all here on the journey with you together. Thanks so much for listening.